for the Torah as you've never seen it before. We, this is going to be the uh, fourth message in our series. The first, uh, we this, beginning with our second message, we began to talk about the nature of Torah. So this is our third, out of the four messages, this is our third talking about the nature of Torah. We talked about how the Torah, the, the nature of Torah is instructions. The word instruction is the meaning of the word Torah. Right? It does not mean law. It means teachings, instruction. So the nature of Torah is about instructions. We, we learn that these are specific technical instructions for the priests in how to handle the holy things and how to eliminate uncleanness from the people. And, and I said the statement challenging, challenging you that we all need to learn Leviticus because as priests we need to know how to discern death and life. What things do we confront, uh, confront in our daily lives for our death and of our life? Yeshua said, the things that enter a man, those are not the things that make them unclean, are the things that come out of man. All uncleanness is related to death. So, if what comes out of our mouth can be unclean, that means there is a source of death in the inside. We know this, we're dead in our sins, we were resurrected, and we're positioned in our Messiah, and we will be resurrected in our physical bodies, but we still have a nature inside of us that very much is connected to death. And so we need to know how to discern when my words, the words that I speak, and even unspoken words, right? Uh, are they coming out of death or are they coming out of life? So we need to be priests, and for that, there's nothing better than the book of Leviticus, which we're going to start reading next week. So that was the nature of Torah um, as instructions. We also saw that the nature of Torah is judgments. And we said that these judgments really mean uh, compassionate decisions, compassionate cases that we see, for instance, in the book of Exodus, beginning in chapter 21. You know, the Lord gives the Ten Commandments, chapter 20. Then in, in 21, He begins to give, these are the, uh, the judgments. And different versions translate them differently. But the Hebrew word is mishpatim. So the mishpatim, the judgments, the function of the judges in Scripture, was to, to show compassion to people who are suffering under oppression. So the cases, for instance, we have we said that we have 42 cases in chapters 21, 22, and 23 of Exodus. 42, six times four, six times six, six, six times seven. It's been a long time since I was in fourth grade. <laughs> and so these are cases. For instance, we we know that we know this passage. You know, talking about Hebrew slaves. If you have a Hebrew slave. You have to let them release them. If you hit them and hit their eye, now they gotta go free. So they are compensations for suffering loss under oppression. And that is precisely what Yeshua taught. He says, He said, Your lives, your righteousness need to overflow, be more abundant than that of the Pharisees. In what way? Well, in the sense that you show compassion. You show compassion. He said, you tithe of these little plants that grow, but you also need to show compassion. Those things are actually priority. They are priority. You're not supposed to stop doing one to do the other. You're supposed to do both. But there, are, there is priority. Showing compassion to people, practicing the mishpatim. That was Yeshua's teaching. So you see, when we understand the Torah like that, we're seeing the Torah in ways that we, we've never seen before. Amen. So the 
the nature of Torah, we said, is threefold. The, the nature of Torah is instructions, discerning life from death, clean from unclean. The nature of Torah is compassion, showing compassion to people who are oppressed. And today we're going to, to see that the nature of Torah is pure worship. The nature of Torah is worship. The Torah can be comprised, can be summarized in two areas. And Yeshua did this. He said that when they asked him, what is the first commandment? He said, love God. And then he said, actually also love people. Mm -hmm. So the Torah is all about its instructions, right? That's the meaning of the word instructions, teachings about the proper way to love God, that's worship, and to love people, that's the Mishpatim. But we have all three right there. The Torah, right, the Hebrew word Torah, the instruction, the, it's all about instructions for life so that you know how to love people, Mishpatim, and how to worship me properly. So today we're going to study about this third word that characterizes Torah. We said that there are three primary types of commandments in the Torah. So we, we find that there are Torot, which is the plural of Torah, so we have instructions. We find that there are Mishpatim, we already mentioned these, these are the judgments. And today we're going to talk about the third kind, and that is the Chukim. Chukim. What is the Chukim? Well, because of our teaching, to, our time for teaching today is kind of short, I need to make sure that it is short. Uh, because it is short, then I'm going to give you a double portion. How's that? <laughs> so next week we're going to um, we're going to go more in depth into the Chukim. So today we're going to take a survey, so to speak of the Chukim. Next week we'll finish the Chukim because, because of two reasons. Number one, the Chukim is probably the more extensive type of commandment in the Torah. So a lot of material in the Torah about the Chukim. And number two, because it's the ones that we understand the least. And to be honest, number three is because the nature of the Chukim are not clearly understood even within Judaism. And, and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, next week. So, the Chukim, worship. There is a, a distinction that God made in the beginning, in uh, Genesis, in creation. He made a distinction when he separated, he separated the light from the darkness, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He separated the waters from the waters. So God made some clear distinctions. And the way that he made these dis distinctions, he did it by speaking his word. The spoken word created the distinctions. Well, the Chukim are all about distinctions. The Chukim are the ways in which God distinguishes His people from among the nations. From the nations. And specifically, the way that He wants His people to worship Him. So He is giving us words that create distinction. When we follow those words, we worship Him in a way that is acceptable to you. And that's what we're going to work through uh, today. The nature of the of the Chukim, of pure worship, is to separate worshipers from the practices of the nations. Amen. From worshiping God in an improper way. That is what the Chukim are all about. How to worship God in a pure way. 
we, we, we begin with, with these words in Genesis 26, verse 5. This is the very first time that we see the word Chukim. It says, because Abraham obeyed me and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. The word statutes there is the word the word Chukim. It is primarily translated in the more liberal versions of, in English, English versions, is primarily primarily translated as um, statues. So let's look at the Fukim and how they relate uh, to worship and to the nations. Uh, Leviticus 18.3. Is this big enough? A little better? Can I do a little better this week? Yeah, let's do it. Thanks. Leviticus 18.3, it says, You shall not do what is done in the land of Egypt, where you lived, nor are you to do what is done in the land of Canaan, where I am, where I am bringing you. You shall not walk in their statues. You shall not walk in their statues. That's the word from King. Verse 4. You are to perform my judgments, that's the Mishpatim, and keep my statutes, the Chukim, to live in accord with them. I am the Lord your God. Verse 5. So, so you shall keep my statutes and my judgments by which a man may live if he does them. I am the Lord. Here's the important part that I want you to, to see in this passage. Right at the beginning. It says, um, nor are you to do what is done in the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you. You shall not walk in their statutes, in their chukim. Here's the thing. The nations have chukim. God is saying, remember the chukim of the Egyptians? And you've heard of the chukim of the Canaanites? Do not worship me according to those practices. So the nations have chukim. The nations have ways in which they worship their gods. That was Israel's, one of Israel's primary struggle. That they would worship God with a golden calf. The, what Aaron said at, in that passage was, this is, I don't know, this is the God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. No, it's not. <laughs> See, he was trying to worship the true God in the way that God was worshipped, the gods were worshipped in Egypt. So they were worshipping God according to the king of Egypt. Now that looks different, because guess what? America has cookie. <laughs> and we are to guard our worship. And by worship, I don't just mean our singing time. By worship is our walk. It says, do not walk in their statues. Walk in my statues. So the entire lifestyle, we would say today, the way we conduct our life is supposed to be according to the Chukim because it's a worship service. Everything that we do is a worship service. So we live according to God's Chukim, to the Torah. Let's, let's look at this in a, in a different, couple different passages. Exodus, I'm sorry, Leviticus 18, 26, and then also verse 30. It says, But as for you, you are to keep my statutes, that's the Chukim, and my judgments, my Mishpatim, and shall not do any of these abominations. Here's, that's what God thinks about the nation's Chukim. You shall not do any of these abominations, neither the native nor the alien who sojourns among you. I'm going to touch on this again, on the alien and, and the, uh, the native. But again, the nations have Chukim. Verse 30 says, Thus you are to keep my charge, 
that you do not practice any of the abominable customs. Here they change the translation, but the word is cookie. Okay, so you are not to practice any of the abominable uh, customs, chukim, which have been practiced before you in the land of Canaan, of course, so as not to defile yourselves with them. I am the Lord, your God. That is also a key concept here. Why are we not to worship God according to any of the chukim of any nation? The reason is because they defy. In other words, they make us unclean. The Torah is all about instructions, right? Instructions in how to discern life and death. The clean and the unclean. So we need to know, we need to know the Torah so that we are able to discern what is clean, what is unclean. What chukim of the nations? What are the chukim of the nations? Because we will be made unclean through them. Now we're not walking around saying, oh, don't touch me today, I'm unclean. I was worshiping, I went to this place and they were worshiping in a weird way. And, and, uh, no, that's not what we do today. Right. What does uncleanness really mean? By the way, I'm not saying that uncleanness is not for today. You will hear me someday teach about the Leviticus, and I will explain myself. <laughs> because it is very much for today. But we're very distant from the place where the temple is supposed to be, and there is no temple. So we are all unclean anyway. If you've been to a funeral, you're unclean. <laughs> so, anyways. Um, the, the reason then is that uh, the uncleanness is related to death. That's what's important. We need to know what has the possibility, the potential of ministering death to us. Because we don't want to receive death through worshiping in a way that is not according to talk. A little competition over here. We have some youth. No, <laughs> Distraction, but we're not following today. <laughs> All right, so um, these are the practices to us not to defile yourselves. The king of the nations, they defile, they minister death. We are to discern what is death. Leviticus 20 23 it says, Moreover, you shall not follow the customs, the king of the nations which I will drive out before you, for they did all these things, and therefore I have abhorred them. I have abhorred them. What's the them here? The things that they did. They did all these things, and the things and the people, and the land spewed them out, that's what the Torah says. So don't do them because the land will speak you out too, which it did, because they did. And so it's uh, it's the clear teaching in Torah. So this is the Chukim of the nations, but what about the Chukim for the nations? See, God is not just saying, or they are unclean, stay away from them. No, God is saying they are unclean. Go and teach them how to worship me in a way that is according to my chukim. Watch this, it says, Leviticus 18, 26. But as for you, you are to keep my statutes and my judgments, so my chukim and my mishpatim, and shall not do any of these abominations, neither the native nor the alien. Sojourns among you. So we have a great debate today in the Messianic world. Is the Torah for non Jews? <laughs> Let me tell you this. Here it says that the Chukim and the Mishpatim, when 
uh, uh, when an alien comes to dwell in Israel, the sojourns among you, this is the language we will say today, this is the language of a, a, a legal, permanent immigrant. Yeah, I am an immigrant in this country. I am today a, 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 an American citizen. But I started out as an immigrant, <laughs> completely legal, never spent one day illegal in this country. Amen. Not even one day. Now, we have, of course, the church from among the nations who have a covenant with God, a, a, a foretaste of the new covenant. But many of them do not realize that they are attached to Israel. They don't realize it in a practical, powerful way. When they do, what happens? They want to observe the Hukim. They want to worship God the way that God prescribes. So when a person comes into proper relationship to the Torah, proper, I mean, not in a rabbinic way and not in a Torah abolished way, but in the proper way, accepting the Torah and living it out by the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Spirit, by the authority of Yeshua. When someone comes under this conviction, they want to worship God Amen. according to His king. So that's the, the Torah, the king for the nations. Uh, watch Numbers 9.14. If an alien sojourns among you and observes the Passover to the Lord, notice the if, it's important. If, if an alien sojourns among you and if he observes, if he makes that decision, once he makes that decision, now he has to follow the Lord. He is accountable to following the Lord. So he wants to uh, observe the Passover uh, to the Lord according to the statute of the Passover and according to his ordinance, so he shall do. You shall have one statute, one full king, both for the alien and for the native of the land. Because the Chukim talks about worship. You cannot have one person worshiping God one way and another person worshiping God another way. That's not God's heart. There's only one way that gives life. Any other way is from death. All right, let's, as an example of this, as elaborating on this, Let's, let's talk about the Chukim and the feasts. Because now we have people of non-Jewish origin coming and realizing their connection to Israel. They make this decision and they begin to follow the feasts. So Leviticus 23.14 and 23.21. This is Leviticus 23. The whole passage talks about the feasts. So until this same day, until you have brought in the offerings of your God, you shall eat neither bread, nor roasted grain, nor new growth. It is to be a perpetual cooking throughout your generations in all of your dwelling places. I'm going to go ahead and skip these verses for the sake of time. But just to say that the, the, the Chukim, here in verse 41, it says, You shall thus celebrate it as a feast to the Lord for seven days. This is speaking about Sukkot. For seven days uh, in the year. It shall be a perpetual Chukim throughout your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. The feasts are prescribed ways of worshiping God. So they are Chukim. We also have the Chukim and Yom Kippur. We're going to go quickly through this. Just read verse 29, Leviticus 16. This shall be a permanent statue, Chukim, for you. In the seventh in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall humble your souls and not do any work, whether the, the native or the alien who sojourns among you. This is a way of worship. 
being thought properly. This is not just for Jews. If you come and you enter and you realize, again, many people don't realize this. It's okay. God understands. He has mercy. He has compassion. He has grace. We don't need to beat anybody over with that. But if someone comes into this realization that Yom Kippur is a way to worship God, then this is the way to do it. You can't do it your own way. It has to be according to the Chukim. The Chukim and the Shema. And we begin to wind it down, wind it down here to plan this way. Quick. Leviticus 6, 1, it says, Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the judgments, which the Lord your God has commanded me to teach you, that you might do them in the land where you are going over to possess it. Verse 2, again, this is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 2, we're speaking of the Shema. The Shema is in verse 4. Right? Hear God. Hear his voice. But before that, it speaks of the Chukim. Verse 2, it says, So that you and your son and your grandson might fear the Lord your God. To keep all his Chukim and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life, and that you and that your days may be prolonged. Verse 20. Still. Deuteronomy uh, 6, speaking of the Shema, all of this is related to the Shema. When your son asks you in time to come, say, what do the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments mean which the Lord our God commanded you? What does it mean? And the passage continues to, to explain, the Lord, we were slaves in Egypt, the Lord delivered us. He brought us here so that we may serve Him. Remember what God spoke to Moses and He said, speak to Pharaoh, tell him to let my people go so that they can what? Worship me. So they can practice my chukim. Okay. And they arrived at Sinai and they worshiped God. So how relevant are the chukim for today? They are the word that God uses to create separation, to create distinction, so that we worship Him in a way that is pure, acceptable to Him, to distinguish us as His people. And this is especially relevant in the body of Messiah to teach the nations. The Hukim are meant to be taught to the nations so that the Lord can rescue them from the enemy. Conclude, I conclude with Leviticus 18 part. It says, Thus you are to keep my charge that you do not practice any of the abominable king which have been practiced before you, so as not to defile yourselves with them. I am the Lord. Amen.